Hello. Today we're exploring railway tunnels and a disused railway line. First of all, we're going down this beautiful little track. Possibly one of the nicest days of the year so far. There are three tunnels. Sugarloaf Tunnel, Weedby Tunnel, and the longest is Druton, over a mile long. Built in 1885, or opened in 1885. Much of the line was close to traffic in 1955, which curiously enough, are two of the years that Matty and McFly went back in time to. There must be a link. I've parked at a small car park just behind me. I'll put the What Three Words app reference for where it is. It's an easy enough walk, it's a bit hilly. But if you walk, you can do this one. It was called the Hull to Barnsley Railway Line, but it never actually went to Barnsley. That was a bit of a marketing name. It stopped at a place called Stairfoot, which was actually two miles short of Barnsley, which is a bit annoying. If you wanted to go to Barnsley and you had to walk two miles at the end of your trip. And I really have picked one of the nicest days to do this walk. Look at that. It's absolutely beautiful. See for miles, miles and miles. Before we get to the railway land though, we're going to just pop and have a look at something else. Something you might not really expect to see in Yorkshire. Can you guess? Let's go find out. This lane is longer than I thought. But we're nearly there. So have you had a guess what we're looking at first? Well, we're here now, so you'll find out. But if you said vineyard, then you would be right. Yep, just over there. One of Yorkshire's finest vineyards. And look at that view, isn't that fantastic? We're looking down towards South Cave and beyond that towards Ghoul, Howden Way. Really couldn't have picked a nicer day. Yeah, it's probably just worth mentioning South Cave for a minute. John Washington came from South Cave, was born there. If you don't know who he is, he's the great grandfather of George Washington, the first president of the United States. There's a nice hotel there, Cave Castle. There's supposedly an escape tunnel which ran all the way to the church. And more importantly, it's got a pub. Apparently a local farming family got the idea to start a vineyard here after a holiday to South Africa. So they planted the first vines in 2012. I think the first proper harvest was 2016 and they'd produce a few wines named after um, the chalk, I think. I think one of them's called Chalk Hill White. But yeah, who knew? A vineyard in the north of England. But don't forget the Romans used to grow grapes here 2,000 years ago when it was nice and warm then. Let's we'll see if we can get a closer look at the vines. Here we are at the vineyard. Let's have a look. Well, typical. It's closed. Cellar door shop access only. Got a nice little wishing well. I wish it was open. But here are the vines. Good south facing hillside. You can see the Humber now. Just to the centre of the picture. Well, time to move on. Let's go find the railway line. This track seems endless, but it's actually only about half a mile. That's a much better view of the vineyards. But we're turning off. Here. Yorkshire Walls Way. It's a bit overgrown. 
I just got tickled by nettles. And we're going down this hill. So I'm not sure of the access to the tunnels. I don't even know if we can get in because it's been that long since I've been. But we'll have a look, see what we can find. There's usually loads of rabbits in this field. But I can't see any today. So I'm told that Druerton Tunnel is one of the longest tunnels in the country, well over a mile long. It's just a shame to close the line. We could probably do with it nowadays. I'm also told that when they built it, the builders knew they'd have to dig out Druerton Tunnel, but they never envisaged digging out Sugarloaf Tunnel or Weedley Tunnel, which makes you wonder how they planned to get the trains through the hills or around them. And with the extra cost, the whole thing nearly went bankrupt after just a year. On top of that, there was a couple of high profile accidents as well. I'm not sure what's happened here. But the topsoil seems to have gone, and that is the chalk that's underneath. Which might not look great, but makes it good for farming. So the first of those accidents involved a train carrying fish as well as passengers crashing to the back of another train that had been left after the couplings failed. That wasn't the worst one though, there was a much worse one later on. Decisions, decisions. Which way do we go? I think I'm going to go left first of all. Try and get down on that railway line. Down here. Guessing that's a rather large sheep gate. I don't actually know where I'm going. It's been that long since I've been down here. But I know that one of the tunnels is to the left, to the west, and the other two are to the east, on what would have been the right, had we turned right back then. In the meantime, I'll enjoy a walk along the edge of this wood. And I'm guessing the railway track bed is down there. Looks a bit swampy. Looks like the path takes a right. Not sure where this path's taken us, but it's going in sort of the right direction. And I reckon it must take us down to the railway line soon. But I really want to be down at the bottom of the valley somewhere on the right. While we're walking aimlessly through the countryside, not knowing where we're going, I'll tell you about the other accident that happened on the railway line. So it's the 25th of September 1907 and train driver John Brooke stopped his train just on the section down in the valley below at the signals. He sent his fireman to go and get a token. Now a token in those days was kind of a, an early form of accident prevention technology. So without that token you couldn't proceed. And in theory, if there's only one token, then there could only be one train on that line at the time. However, having a token might stop trains crashing into each other but it does not stop a steam engine exploding after years of poor maintenance. So, poor John Brooke, blown a thousand feet in the air, and not surprisingly, found himself ever so slightly dead. His fireman was the lucky one, walked away without injuries. Yeah, we're almost there, I can see the line, just through the trees to the right now. We're nearly down. So it should be, I was going to say just around this corner, but there's a bridge. I guess we're on a bridge over the railway line. Have a look. There it is. Looks 
a bit wet. And that looks a bit dry. Let's carry on down. Maybe it didn't take the best route. I'm hoping if I wander through here, I might be able to get onto the railway line. There is a path of sorts, but you can barely see it. I'll show you. See what I mean? You can barely see it. So other people have been this way. Other idiots who also got lost. <laughs> Certainly not the best way. Oh. But it worked. Whoa. Yeah, don't do what I did. Ah. Made it. Yeah, I think in retrospect, I probably should have turned right at that last sign which would be behind me this way. Oh, that'd be a good time to plug this book. Buy one. Right, we're on the track bed. See where we end up. Yeah, so this, this track has also been a lifeline to the villagers around here. Um, probably no more so than in 1947, which saw one of the worst winters ever. So everyone thought it was going to be quite a normal winter. Um, January saw temperatures of 14 degrees Celsius, which was warm. However, on the 23rd of January, it started snowing and it didn't stop for 55 days. Snow drifts were reported up to 23 feet deep, which is hard to imagine today. I mean, look at it. Absolutely glorious. And as well as the snow drifts, temperatures dropped to minus 21 degrees Celsius. So I can remember my grandparents telling me that the insides of the windows froze. Well, there's accounts in 1947 of whole sinks of water freezing solid. Imagine that. We live nowadays with our central heating. People back then had multiple layers on. the were indoors. They could barely keep warm. So here's the first of the tunnels. Weedley Tunnel. It doesn't look great, it looks like there's a fence. I don't know if you can just make that out. Probably a bit clearer now. Probably make out the fence. I don't think we're getting through it. Which is odd. Because I can kind of remember walking through it the last time. But that was a long time ago. Maybe become unsafe. Well, they certainly knew how to build. Looks pretty impressive and solid. Where are you going, fella? He's just a baby. Yeah, we're not going in. Clearly. Private. And it's bolted. Let's have a look in there. Wow. Looks in pretty good condition. It's a shame we can't get in because it's not all that long and now I'm going to have to walk all the way back up around the way I've come. Oh well, back we go. Just see a deer disappearing into the distance. It's sprung out. There he goes. Into the hedge. Absolutely gorgeous. Back up this steep thing. I'm only videoing this in case I fall. It would be funny. No, nope, I'm up. <sighs> Tempted to climb over this fence. What can possibly go wrong? 
and that's what can go wrong. Still, let's go for it. So let's carry on with the story of that winter of 1947. Unfortunately, the country was running out of coal. There'd been a bit of a dispute with the coal miners. And no one expected the winter to be that cold, so no one bothered to stockpile coal for the winter, which obviously turned out to be one of the worst ones ever. So looking for someone to blame, the newspapers pointed the fingers at a guy called Manny Shinwell, who was responsible for that sort of thing. He tried to blame the climate, whatever else, but everyone blamed him. So he was forced to resign. And so what did they do? They made him the Minister for War instead. Which was great while there was no war on. But then a couple of years later, the Korean War broke out and Manny Shinwell was in Hello. charge. And to cut a long story short, that is why you now have to pay NHS prescription charges for things like glasses. Because it was Manny Shinwell that made that happen. Because they'd be previously been free under the NHS. Have you ever noticed how it's always quicker going back? I think I'm nearly there. Where would you rather be? Stuck in some dowdy office or out here? I know where I'd rather be. Yep, here we are, nearly back at that sign. Some of that bear chalk on the right. Still, it was a nice walk. If a pointless one. And I got to see a deer. Always a pleasure. Okay, supposed to leave it shut. That's it. So down here, there are some springs. Shall we go and have a look? Gets the old knees on the way down, it's a bit steep. We'll go the easy way, this way. You see all the chalk in the soil. Wow, look at that. Clear. You see the water coming out here. Look at that, it's clear as anything. Nothing wrong with that. It's actually a nicer walk down here than it is up top. Got the blossom, the fresh water. The cool little bridge made out of a tree trunk. Let's take the bridge. See where it goes. <laughs> oh man. Yowch. Yeah, basically nowhere. Let's go back. Oh wow wow wow. Duck. And we're back on the regular path. Yeah, through that gate, that'll take us back onto the railway line. When we will turn left, we'll go have a look at the other end of the tunnel. It did look just as locked as the other end, but as the first end, but we'll have a look anyway. Go over this. Oh, 
So here we are. All right. Yep, can see the other end of the tunnel. Looks darker from this end. A bit more forbidding. Private again. Seems like everything's private nowadays. There we go. Beautiful. Seems a little place to hide in the wall when a train came. If there was a worker in here, you'd bolt into that. It's definitely cooler here as well. Nice and cool out the sun. So that was Weedley Tunnel. Not much to see. Next stop, Sugarloaf. A little acorn tells us we're momentarily on the wall's way, but only for a moment. Because just here is a little path. Watch the nettles. This is a much longer path. I think I've been walking for five minutes. I'm not sure how far it is, maybe a mile. So we're getting to the start of the cutting. So there's obviously somewhere around here that the avalanche happened when all the snow dish came over the top and covered the train in ice and tuned it for months. It looks like the remains of some old platform. Not a lot to see. Just a little bit. Looks like it's made of chalk as well. Yeah, I was a bit puzzled. Railway lines are generally flat and then I saw this going up. But of course the line veers off to the right. I'm guessing the track's in use by the estate nowadays for something else. So why are going down here? More platform perhaps, unless it's just shoring up the hill. The path takes a bend to the right and it should be just around that bend somewhere that we see, first of all, the viaduct if it's still standing, and then Sugarloaf Tunnel. Yeah, I'm not sure if this is a public footpath or not. But anyway, I'm a believer in the right to roam. But my advice is just don't leave a mess, don't do any damage, you should be all right. And if someone does ask you to leave, be polite and leave. Oh, there we are. Just see the bridge and behind it the tunnel. I can just imagine a steam train coming out of there, puffing through there under that bridge and under that tunnel. What a sight. It's got even warmer. Someone's made a mess, had a fire, left the rubbish. No wonder people got annoyed. Wow. Oh. 
very overgrown compared to the last time I came. I suppose it would be the tall face is beginning to collapse. Lots of nasty bugs buzzing around. Oh dear, and it's blocked up. <sighs> Gutted. Looks like the other end has been subject to some kind of landslide as well. Oh, temperature's dropped. Oh, well, I don't think the fence did much good. People have just shifted it out of the way. Look, they've hiked it out of the way. Shall we go in? It would be rude not to. Here we are, Sugarloaf Tunnel. Slightly longer than we'd be, but it's got nothing on Druton Tunnel. I believe one mile, 354 yards, Druton Tunnel. There are either stalagmites or stalactites hanging from the roof, whichever the ones are that hang down. Little hideaway in the wall just to the right. It's in surprisingly good condition. Of course you shouldn't come in here. It's silly to come in here. It might collapse at any time. Only an idiot would come in here. Let me be your idiot so you don't have to. I'm intrigued at what's happened at the other end though. A big pile of something. I don't know if you can see, but that mud looks a bit gloopy. I'm not sure how much further I'm going to get. Mm. Yeah, not going to get much further at all. It's like quicksand. I'm sinking into it already. No, oh, there you go. Still, it looks nice. Let's have a look at the other end. Wow. Hello! 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 <laughs> oh, my feet are filthy. Let's get out before it collapses. cool so the picture on the screen is not giving the full glory there you go it's beginning to come through look at that absolutely beautiful don't remember the tree the fallen tree from last time which only adds to the beauty I think but that is absolutely stunning You don't get much better than that. Time to find somewhere to have lunch because it was absolutely freezing in there. I wonder if we can get up there. Yep, over there. Let's try and get up there. I mean, it looks possible. Probable. Just hope it doesn't collapse in the next 30 seconds.
Mission accomplished, I think. Time for lunch. I think I've got the world's best picnic spot. Yeah, just a few feet ahead of me.